all the bait. Mm. The sand in my toes. No rain, no, not here. Ah! Wake up! What's that for? We're meant to be filming C for K. Come on, get up! How long have you been filming me? Not that long. It's okay. We just caught you snoring. Yeah! Not too long. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to C for K. Uh, uh, learning. Learn uh, we've done Rahab's request. Uh, I remember. Faith. Uh, last week was Atkinson or Atkinson. We forgot to say that one last week. Uh, what are we looking at this week? This week, Jill's going to be teaching us later on, and she's going to be teaching us about Caleb's reward. You promised me cake. Can I have my cake, please? I did. And you will get it. I'm not eating the chocolate, I kept my promise. But it's currently killing down and I need to decorate it to make it perfect. But we can still have it this episode, right? Yeah, we'll have it at the end once I've decorated it and made it just the best it can be. I promise you, by the end of the episode, you'll be eating your cake. Ooh. Well, but, until then, shall we sing some songs, hear the story from Jill, and see what everybody's been up to this week? Yeah, shall we do that? Noah built the most enormous boat They kept the birds and animals afloat The Lord was good, the Lord was strong And Noah lived his life for him God again. The Lord is good, the Lord is strong, and we will live our lives for Him.
Hi there. Great to see you. Um, I've just been reading the book of Joshua because this week Andrish has asked me to tell you the next part of the story. Last week we heard about Achan and how his sin meant that God couldn't bless his people and they lost the battle against Ai. Before that we learned about Israel's faith when they marched around the walls and then I even remember a story about Rahab and some spies. And actually today's story is going to go even further back in time and we're going to think about a friend of Joshua from long ago. But before I tell you the story, I have a feeling that Andrish has left me some clues to help me to tell you the story today. So I'm going to go and have a look for them just now and I'll see you again in just a minute. Well, I've been looking all over the place. I've been using my magnifying glass, but I haven't spotted any clues. I was sure Andrish said he was going to leave some clues. Oh, oh, I think these might be the clues. Let's have a look. Let's see what we can find. Oh, down here. Well, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve little people. And they seem to be looking at some land. And look. There are even some dark glasses. Perfect for if you're spying something out and you don't want anyone to recognise you. What an interesting clue. I wonder if there's anything else. Oh, oh, what's this? Milk, delicious grapes. They're really big ones. And honey. Oh, I love honey. I wonder what those are all about. Is there anything else? Oh, a calendar. Somebody's been crossing out the D's. And then down at the bottom here, there's a smiley face and it says 40 years. Gosh, fancy having to wait 40 years for something to happen. Oh, and what's this? Hmm, a great big pair of muddy, worn, heavy boots. Oh, and something else. Oh, a little trumpet. Gosh, how interesting. Well, these clues are quite confusing. I'm not very sure what they're all about. I'm going to keep looking and see if I can find any more. Uh, uh oh. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure what that was, but I've knocked it down. Oh dear. But here's something a spade. I wonder if something's hidden under here. Let's have a look. Oh, oh my word. There is something hidden. Silver and gold. Hidden, buried, out of sight. Gosh, that's interesting. Oh, this looks good though. I found a big... Oh, I thought it was a big bar of chocolate, but actually, oh, most of it's gone. Only a tiny bit left. How strange. Hmm, here's something else. The Holy Bible. Well, this is ever, always a good thing to find, isn't it? And the Bible is God's word to us and tells us all of the things that we need to know. Hmm, I know today's stories in the Bible, but I'm not quite sure why this is a clue, but hopefully we'll be able to work it out. Hmm, what else? Let me see. Ooh. Ooh. I think it's a hanky. Well, it looks clean at least. Oh, look, it's got a little knot tied in the corner. How strange. But you know, when I was a little girl, I remember my granddad telling me that if he wanted to remember something, if he thought he might forget, then he would tie a little knot in the corner of his hanky and then put it in his pocket. And when he took it out later on, and saw the knot, it would help him to remember whatever that thing was that was important that he wanted to remember. Maybe somebody's done that with this, thank you. Mm. Oh, something's fallen down here. Let's see, what's this? It's got a ribbon and something shiny. Oh, I think it's a medal. Gosh, a medal, okay, what else can we see? Oh, it's somebody's birthday. I love reading people's birthday cards. Let's have a look. It's got a pirate on the front. It says, birthday wishes. And inside it says, dear Caleb, happy 85th birthday. 
Have a wonderful day. Oh, gosh, 85's old, isn't it? Whoever Caleb is, he must be quite an old man. Oh, well, we're certainly getting lots of clues and I can see something else here. Let's see, what's this? Oh my word, a sword, a sword. Well, that sounds like you're gonna have an exciting story. I wonder why there's a sword. And here's something else. Oh, it's a little hill or a mountain. That must be part of the story too. Gosh, we've got loads of clues. Is there anything else? Oh, there is a present. I love presents. Oh, I wonder who it's for. Maybe it's a present for Caleb, seeing as it's his birthday. Maybe when we read the story, we'll find out. Do you want to come with me just now? And let's see if we can tell the story. Come on, C4K, let's go. Hello again, C4K, I'm back. I've got the clues. I've got my trusty bat assistant and I'm going to give it a go at telling this week's story. So do you remember we've had the story of Rahab's request of Israel's faith and Achan's sin and this week's story is called Caleb's Reward. We've already learned a little bit about Caleb from the clues but let's start at the beginning with the first clue. Our spy glasses. Caleb was one of 12 spies who went to have a look at the promised land and see what it was like when the Israelites first arrived at the edge of the land. All of this happened over 40 years ago and when Caleb and Joshua and the other spies went into the land they found that it was full of good things, giant grapes and they even said it was flowing with milk and honey because it was such a rich land that it was full of flowers and plants for the bees to use to make honey and it had lots of good grassland and fields for the animals so that they would produce lots of milk. So they saw straight away that it was a very good land. But unfortunately, the Israelites were frightened of the people in the land. They were scared that they wouldn't be able to beat them, that they wouldn't be able to take hold of the land. And they didn't trust God. And so God said that because they hadn't trusted him, they would have to spend another 40 years in the wilderness before they could go into the promised land. Well, let's fast forward 40 years and we get to the stories that we've been hearing recently. The story of Rahab who protected the spies and then asked them whether they would protect her in return when they came to take over Jericho. 40 years have gone by and the Israelites have marched around the walls with their big boots on, blowing their trumpets and oh my goodness me, they didn't knock down the walls. I knocked down these walls. The Israelites didn't knock down the walls. But after they had marched around the walls every day, and then on the seventh day they'd marched around seven times, and then they shouted, the walls fell down. And they fell down because God did it, because he gave them the land. Wow, what an amazing story. But then the next story was quite sad, wasn't it? Because we heard about Achan and how Achan stole silver and gold and buried it and hid it and didn't own up even when he had the chance. And because of his sin, God didn't allow the Israelites to win a big battle against a city called Ai. There were big consequences to Achan's sin. A consequence is something that happens because of something else. Do you remember last week, Josh snuck into the cupboard and he ate a whole load of the chocolate. And that meant that Heather couldn't make his favourite chocolate mousse because there was hardly any chocolate left. That was the consequence of what Josh did. And the consequence of Achan's sin and of the fact that even when he had lots of chances, he didn't own up and say sorry. The consequence of his sin was that the people didn't win the battle and that God had to punish Achan for his sin because he didn't say sorry. It was really sad. But thank goodness, after Achan had been punished, all of the people said sorry to God for the sin. And they had another battle against Ai, and this time God helped them in the battle, and they won the battle. 
and after the battle, Joshua read to all the people from God's word from the Bible to remind them of all of the important things that it said and how important it was to trust God and to do what he said and to trust his promises, like the promise that he would give them the land. Okay, so those are the bits of story that we've had already. My next clue was this rather grotty, horrible hanky with a knot in it. And you remember my granddad used to say that the knot in the hanky was to help you to remember something. Well, this is where we start to hear about Caleb. Caleb was one of the 12 spies who went to spy out Egypt more than 40 years ago. And all of the time from then until now, until the time when the, the Israelites had started to conquer the land and the walls of Jericho had come down and they had won the battle against Ai and they were starting to move into the land. For all of that time, Caleb had remembered, he'd remembered what happened when he went into the land and he'd remembered that he had been promised a special portion, a special bit of the land because when those 12 spies went into the land, 10 of them said, oh, we're scared. The people are too big. There's no way we can beat them. We're just gonna get squished. We can't go and take over that land. The people are massive. But Caleb and Joshua said, aha, uh -huh, the people are big. They look quite scary, but God has promised us the land and we know that God keeps his promises. So for all of the years and years and years after that, Caleb remembered and Caleb kept on trusting God. Caleb was faithful. We could have given him a medal that said faithful Caleb because he kept on trusting God and he remembered a promise that had been made that when they finally moved into the land that he would be given a special bit of the land. The bit that he went to spy out, the bit that he saw in the hills. Where's my hill? Here it is. And Caleb went to speak to Joshua and he said to Joshua, remember that promise about the land? And Joshua did remember. And so Joshua was able to say to Caleb, yes, you can have that land. You can have that land that you were promised as a reward for the fact that you have been faithful for all these years. Even though now Caleb was 85 years old, which is quite old, Caleb still kept on trusting God and he knew that God would give him the land but he was even ready to get out his sword and to fight for the land because he trusted God to help him to win the battle. And so that's today's story of Caleb and his faithfulness and it's, it's a really interesting story isn't it? It happened a long time ago and it's true and like all the stories that are in the bible it's there for a reason and so we can think about what would it mean for us to be faithful like caleb what would it mean for you to keep on trusting god every day what would it mean for you to remember that god always keeps his promises even if it takes a long time well Thanks for listening, C4Ks. Um, I hope you've enjoyed today's story and I hope you enjoy the rest of the episode. Bye. You know that cake I made you? Yeah. Well, it's cooled down now and I need to decorate it. So I thought to make it perfect for you because you've waited so well for your reward that we could choose what design you want on top of your cake. Ooh, well, that one has a bit missing. Yeah. Uh, too much fruit. <laughs> Ooh. That's not all chocolate, though, and I've only made you a chocolate cake. Oh. Sorry. No. It's nice, but it's got a weird lady on it. Mm. <gasps> that one. Is that the one you want? That I want that one, in case you can't see. That one. We can do that. Shall I go and get on with the decorating? And then yeah. we can have it for the end of the episode. Because we waited and you promised. 
and, and I'm not eating the chocolate. And I'll try to make it as perfect as I can. Shall I get on with it? Yeah. Cool. See you later. Enjoy the rest of the episode. Mmm, cake. No fear. The Lord. And serve. Him. Fifthly. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped. And serve. The Lord. Joshua 24, 24 verse 14. That's some great memorising, guys. But what does this verse actually mean? So it starts off by telling us to fear the Lord. And when we hear the word fear, we think of something that we're scared of. But when the Bible talks about us fearing the Lord, it's a healthy fear. Just like we have a healthy fear of sharks or of lightning in a thunderstorm. We know that they can do some damage and that they're very powerful. But it doesn't stop us from appreciating um, how amazing they are. And this is similar to what God is asking us here when he asks us to fear him that he wants us to understand how powerful he is, how mighty he is, um, and that he is the creator of the universe. He wants us to know that he is the God that caused um, the sea to come crashing down on Israel's enemies. He's the God that um, created this whole universe, that he is the God that um, loves us so deeply, but that also is someone that stepped in and fought Israel's battles and caused them to win against their enemies. And that's then why the verse says for us to serve him faithfully. Now, we should be serving God and giving our lives to him and he deserves that because of who he is. And a lot of the time we don't give him that. We um, look to other things in our lives to make us happy. We don't put him first. We put our friendships first, we put our popularity first, we put our Xboxes first. Um, you choose what you put in front of God um, and we're all guilty of it. But God is asking us to throw away those things that we're putting in our lives to make us happy because he knows that ultimately he's the only one that can make us happy and he is the one that deserves our full time and effort. So let's challenge each other um, to look to God, to give him our time first, that we choose to love him the most and that we can enjoy the gifts he's given us, like friends and family um, and all these things, but that we ultimately um, are looking to him and serving him as our amazing creator God that loves us so deeply. No fear of the Lord. And serve him faithfully. Throw away the God your ancestors worshipped. And serve the Lord. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. Yeah! Welcome to Craft Time with Lindsay and Ellen. Wasn't that an amazing story from Jill all about Caleb? Caleb must have been so happy to finally get that last bit of land himself that he'd been waiting so many years for. You know, today we thought that we would help you have a little bit of land of your own, just like Caleb, and to help us remember God's promises. Now, we don't have the same promises as Caleb, but we do know that God gave us this amazing world to enjoy and to look after. So today, Ellen and I are going to show you how you can enjoy God's amazing world and look after God's world too. So today, we are going to get you to make a homemade self-watering plant pot by recycling old plastic milk bottles. So whenever you start a new project, what do you have to remember? Always ask permission and get some help too if you need it. Excellent. So next you need to take your milk bottle. Make sure it's clean inside and all washed out. And then you're going to take off the label and find yourself a pair of scissors or you might need to ask an adult to get a knife. And then you get your pen. With your pen, draw a line around your milk bottle so that it makes it 
almost in half. Then get your scissors or your knife and cut your piece, your milk bottle in half. When you've done that, it's going to look a bit like this. You're gonna have a bottom piece and a top piece. And now you've got those pieces, we're gonna show you how to decorate them. So when you have your two bits of milk bottle, you're gonna put this piece in upside down inside this bottom part. And then on this bottom part, you can de decorate it however you want. Ellen, you decorated this one already, didn't you? What did you do with this one? I drew a rainbow because it reminds us that God always keeps his promises because he showed a rainbow to Noah when he kept his promise that he wouldn't flood the world again. Thank you, that's brilliant. So you can decorate it however you want and permanent markers are the best for these things. You could also get your stickers out. Some stickers don't stick so well but these nice sticky foam cup pieces stick really well so Ellen's going to finish decorating this plant pot for us. And then the other way you can decorate is by painting your pot. This paint, this pot, we painted with acrylic paint. So if you've got acrylic paint, that works really well. Or maybe you could get some ready mix paint and mix it with half again of PVA glue. And that paints on really well and we have a nice green pot now. But my favorite way to decorate these is to decorate them with um, tissue, paper. tissue paper. So cut your pieces of tissue paper into very small pieces and get a paintbrush and then in a pot mix half PVA glue and half water and then you take your piece of tissue paper, paint your pot with your mixture of PVA glue and water, stick your tissue paper on and paint over and keep going all the way around your pot and then when it's dry it'll be nice and hard and look amazing. So next, we're going to show you how to turn your milk bottle into a plant pot. So get your milk bottle that you've painted the bottom part of and your top part is going to upside down inside it. And then you have to fill this halfway up with some soil. We've even reused another milk bottle as our scoop for our compost. You need to make sure you don't get your hands um, covered in the compost. And if you do, you have to wash them really, really well. So we're going to fill up our plant pots with compost. And when we've done that, we'll come back and show you how to put your plants in. So our pots have now got compost in them. Some of them are fuller than others. This one, Ellen has filled nicely to the top and she's going to sprinkle a few lettuce seeds on here. And this is going to grow a little bit of lettuce. Are you gonna sprinkle them off? That's super. And then we're going to put a tiny bit more compost over the top. And then we need to give them a little bit of water to get them started. So we'll sprinkle some water onto the top. These ones here are going to have our plants in them. So I have got a cyclamen and a fern. I'm gonna take the fern out of the pot and I'm gonna put it in here. And then I'm going to fill this up around the edges with more compost. And I'm going to put the cyclamen into my purple one. I've also got some basil from the supermarket and we're going to put it into these other pots. So why don't you come back in a few seconds and we'll show you what we've done. Well, here we are with all of our plant pots almost finished. We have a fern in this one and Ellen's lettuce seed in this one. And we've got some basil and some sick in it. Yeah, and so the last one that we're doing is another bit of basil and we're just finishing with the last bit of compost. We're gonna have to wash our hands well after this. Make sure you push your compost down nicely. You get plenty of good, healthy soil for that plant to grow. But plants also need water. So we're going to give them a bit of a sprinkle on top. But the amazing thing about these planters is that you can fill them with water from the bottom. You don't need loads, but if you lift the top piece up and pour your water in the side, just like this, then these become self-watering and the plants will take up all that water from the bottom of the milk bottle. Well, we hope you've had lots of fun watching this craft and maybe got an, your own ideas of how you could make your own little piece of land. We would love to see anything that you have created, wouldn't we? So feel free to get creative at home and send us your pictures and any of your ideas. Thanks for watching. Let's be creative.
we've been learning today about Caleb's reward and before we go uh, we need to do our think our do and our pray think there's a verse in the bible it's quite a famous one John 3 16 it says for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life do you know just like Caleb in the story today he was promised something great but he had to believe and trust God would provide it and just like that verse says you know God provided Jesus for us and if we want to go and live with him forever in this perfect place all we have to do is believe in him and trust in him uh, do that's only one of the great promises in the Bible that's only one instance where we can see that God has kept his promise and will keep his promise why don't you have a look for some more see if you can get some help from a parent from a brother a sister if you're on the Sunday school zoom chat why don't you ask people there and let's see how many different promises we can find in the Bible why don't we pray God sent Jesus to die for us he kept the ultimate promise he promised way back in Genesis that he would send someone to provide us a way out of sin, a way out of the bad stuff we did so we can go and live with him forever. So why don't we pray thanks that you sent Jesus for that. Should we do that now? P R A Y. Dear God, thank you that we can look at this story today about Caleb and how uh, you kept your promise to him and that he trusted in you to do that. We thank you that you have kept your promise to us, that you have sent Jesus to die and provide a way for us uh, to come and live and be with you forever. We pray that as we go into this week, uh, we'll remember that, we'll look for your promises in the Bible, and we'll remember ultimately that believing in you will lead to the best reward ever. Pray all this in your precious name. Amen. I think that's all we got time for. I haven't even had the cake yet. Josh? Yeah? Look what I've made for you. <gasps> yes! Here, as promised, because you didn't eat the chocolate and you waited for something It's got better, the fingers and the m and the... Mm. Is the cake that you wanted. Mm. Don't eat it all at once. Not and for no, you. I was going to say, it's not good for ducks. Yes! We'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.